Hey, how's it going? Good to see ya. Today, we're gonna compare the sound recording capabilities of two popular home studio interfaces, the Scarlett 2i2 and the Claret 8 Pre, both by Focusrite. Now, Focusrite has been dominating the consumer interface market for a while now. They have a number of different lines. They have their Scarlett line, which is the most popular, and the cheapest one comes in at around $200. Now, this is a USB interface, the next one they have is the Sapphire, which I'm pretty sure has been discontinued. It was a Firewire interface, and I haven't really seen much of Firewire anymore, so as far as I'm concerned, they've discontinued that line. And more recently, they brought in the Claret line, which is a Thunderbolt, and it also features a new circuit, the Air feature, which I will talk about in a little bit. So this one for the 2 Pre runs around $600. So the difference between the Scarlet Interface 2i2 and the Claret 2 Pre is about $400. And in this video, we're gonna see if there's enough of a difference to justify spending $400 more to get the Claret Interface. Is there actually some added value to this one or does it just matter how you want to interface your interface? Bruh. Do you want USB? Or you want Thunderbolt or so in this video we're going to compare these two interfaces and see if there's an audible difference between the Scarlet and the Claret. Let's get to it. Learn audio engineering. Learn audio now. Sound strategies to sound goals. So 2i2 8 Pre. There's some obvious limitations here. Uh, for one, the Scarlet 2i2 can only take in two microphones. So I'm only gonna be using two inputs for any instrument. So for drums, I'm gonna be doing just a stereo pair of overheads using the recorder man technique, uh, which is a really great technique. I will talk about it in another video and link it in the card above. The other thing that the Claret has is an unfair advantage is the air circuit and I talked about that and I will talk further about that later. So what this does is it mimics the old Focusrate ISA preamps to give you some of that vintage analog flavor and from what I hear, it makes things brighter. It adds a little bit more top end to it and adds that air quality. So in case you're new, this is how it's gonna work. I'm gonna play an example and then switch between both interfaces to see if we can hear a difference. We have two choices, A or B. And once you've made your choice, make sure to lock it into the pull card at the top of the screen. To do this experiment, I've got some Y cables that has one female going into a microphone and two males that are going into two separate interfaces. Both of these are recorded at 96 kilohertz, 24 bit depth, and I would love to know if you can hear a difference between them. So here's a little swing tune I put together with minimal processing. I compressed the bass just a little bit, and between the two versions, they're balanced and processed exactly the same, so we can see what the difference is between them. And I will add that I used the air feature on one of the instruments, so let's see if you can pick out which one it is. Let's check it out. Okay, pretty cool. So that air feature does make a big difference, and I think it's one of the biggest selling points of the Claret line. I did a little bit of digging online, and I found that what this is is essentially a high shelf boost starting as low as around 100 hertz and increasing to about 3 dB around 20 kilohertz. So this is going all the way up. It's making everything much brighter 
and much more nuanced in the top end, which can be really nice. I did use it on the drums and I like that because I, honestly I'm using 58s as overheads, uh, which aren't super bright. So adding a little bit more top end really gives some more definition and sizzle to the cymbals, which I really like. So let's check this out with another example. This one has some more heavy processing, but again, it's even between mix A and mix B. We done four already and now we're steady and then they went one, two, three, four. <laughs> Sunshine, laughing in the rain, hitting on the moonshine, rocking in the grain. I got no time to pack my bags, my foot's outside the door. I got a date, I can't be late for the hopes that I bought. To an ocean, I can hear the oceans roar. Play for free, I'll play for me. I tell you a whole lot more, more. I sing about the good things and the sun that lights the day. I used to sing on the mountains as the ocean lost its way. So there's a couple other things that I wanted to take a look at, and that is the latency. I did a latency test on both of these, and the way that I did that was record input one, and then I set the output of that to bus one, and I recorded that onto a separate track, and then measured the distance between those two tracks to calculate the latency. The Claret had a latency of four milliseconds, which is pretty good, and the Scarlet had a latency of 51 milliseconds. So obviously there is a big difference in the speed of these devices. That might be because it's a Thunderbolt interface and those things are crazy fast, but there you go. There is some added value to getting the Claret. So honestly, I really love doing these shootouts. They're a lot of fun and they give you a better indication of what your gear is doing and helps you to better select which, which color or tool you want for your palette. Regularly doing mic shootouts or preamp shootouts or, or anything like that. So setting these two up side by side and A Bing them and really picking out the difference and the nuances between each one is gonna help you to use your gear better and get better recordings. I remember as an intern, we would do these every couple months where we would take a whole bunch of mics and, and put them on the kit and then we would get the drummer to play something really simple and flip back between them and hear the difference between the preamps or between the mics or, or anything like that. And, and really stretch your ears to hear what's different, describe that sound, and then remember that. So the next time you, you're asked to make a choice or to suggest something, you have a little bit more experience as to what all these different tools sound like. And over time, that's just gonna get faster and get better and you're just gonna instinctively know the right tool for the job. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you're new and let me know in the comments if you have any gear that I should review or that I should do a shootout on or compare or anything like that. I'm always looking for new video ideas. So as always, thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.